All right, Pit Buyer Kids, here's the one you wanted. You wanted to know about uh, replication in the repliosome. So we're going to hit the notes, we're going to walk through this and see if we can make sure that everybody understands it. So um, I'm going to pick up right where we left off uh, yesterday. And so one of the things we got to do is when we're looking at DNA, and remember DNA is a double helix, so it's basically braided around itself. Well, if you have somebody that's got a braid and you just grab the end of the braid and yank on it, it's basically going to tighten all that braid. It's probably going to damage their hair. It's going to hurt their head. And the same thing is going to happen if you have DNA and you just grab the ends of it and try to rip it apart. It's going to tighten. It's going to break. It's going to get damaged. So, since we have to copy DNA because we have to replicate DNA before we can make new cells, I somehow have to separate the DNA so I can read all the base pairs but without damaging the DNA. So, one of the things we're going to use is we're going to use some enzymes in here. And some of these enzymes are going to come in and they're going to help us unwind stuff. Um, and the reason that we have to unwind it, because if I grab the end and just started pulling on it, almost like a, an old phone cord, I'm going to get all wrapped up like this and it's going to break. So I use this enzyme, DNA gyrase, and DNA gyrase is going to help us to relieve some of that torsional strain. Now, there's also some other things called topoisomerases, but they're going to come on here and grab on to the DNA as well and help kind of open up that braid and release some of that tension so we don't get all this coiling up here and damage our DNA. So we always have to have enzymes to help us unwind DNA. You can't just grab the end and yank it apart. That would be no good. Now, as far as DNA, this is going to go back into the stuff we did the other day. Remember, DNA, it is basically anti-parallel, so it has directionality to it. Up here, this strand is 5' prime to 3', prime, and this bottom strand is 3' prime to 5'. Prime. So whenever I open up the DNA, I've got two different directionalities I've got to deal with. As I told you the other day, so the thing that's going to make a difference is the enzymes. The enzymes only like to work in one direction. The enzymes like to actually build things from a 5' prime to 3' prime direction, which means they need to read the template in a 3' prime to 5' prime direction. So understanding the directionality is going to be important. So as you can see, when we open up this DNA right here, right, right here is going to be our replication fork. And it's just called a fork because it's where the two points come together. Now, one of the things that's going to happen is the one strand is going to be able to go super fast. As soon as I open this, this strand down here, right, this 3 prime to 5 prime, as soon as I can get a little RNA primer, which the RNA primer just says, hey, uh, Mr. DNA polymerase, so I'm just going to need you here in a second. This is where you start to do your job. So I can lay this RNA primer, but as soon as our DNA comes in here, it can travel in this direction nonstop. So as fast as that fork can open, that's as fast as I can go this way, which means that this strand is going to be our leading strand. This one is just going to be able to keep copying and copying and copying as fast as the replication fork can open. Well, unfortunately, and I know this is where a lot of you are going to have issues, we have this lagging strand thing. And the lagging strand, because of the directionality of the DNA, it can't quite go at the same rate as this leading strand. So what we have to do is we have to wait, and every time this thing opens up just a little bit, now I can put my primer in, now I can bring in my DNA polymerase, and I can read along in that 5' prime to 3' prime direction. But I can only go a chunk at a time because of the nature of the directionality of the DNA molecule itself. So we have a fast copying and we have a slow copying. Okay? Now, as far as some of the things that are going to be involved, as far as the enzymes, primase. Well, remember, this is an RNA primer, so I'm going to go ahead and say this is probably an RNA primase, and that means it's going to lay down things like A's and U's and G's and C's. Okay. Next one that's going to come along is going to be DNA polymerase 1. Now, this is kind of our important guy. DNA polymerase 1, this is the guy that's going to do the proofreading, um, and it's going to lay down all of our major bases. So it's going to follow those base pairing rules laid out by Shargoff, A to T and G to C, and it's going to start to fill these in. So if that was a T, it's an A. If that's a C, it's a G, so on and so forth. Now, DNA polymerase, remember, this is on the lagging strand. The DNA polymerase is going to read along until it runs into that RNA primer. As soon as it runs into the RNA primer, it has to fall off. It can't go anywhere else. So it literally comes off of there and goes away. Now, one of the other things that we're going to have to do at some point, notice I've got these yellow primers in here. I've got to get rid of them because they're RNA. So I'm going to have to get rid of these, and I'm going to use another DNA polymerase. And its job is going to be to come in here. It's going to remove the primer. It's going to put in the right DNA nucleotides, 
And then the last thing I'm going to need is DNA ligase. Because after I come in here and I get rid of these RNA primers, I'm still going to have the backbone that I have to glue together. And so think of a ligase like ligand, right? It's going to be a thing that attaches. So this guy is going to act like a glue gun, and it's going to glue this backbone together. So it's going to help us make that sugar phosphate backbone. All these fragments are called Okazaki fragments on the lagging strand because that was the name of the guy that discovered them, Dr. Okazaki. All right, now this is where you guys were having the issues, right? I know there's a lot going on in this picture. So this is the replication fork, AKA the replosome, and there's a lot of things happening. So let's start with the DNA. So here's my parent strand of DNA, the green strand here. And obviously, I've got to release some of that torsional strain, so I need to have DNA gyrase come in here so we don't get everything all bundled up. You can see my two strands. I got my five prime to three prime strand is on top, and my three prime to five prime strand is on the bottom. Now, because this is five prime to three prime, that means that my enzyme is going to be able to jump on here and just start chugging along super fast. So this is going to be my leading strand up here. And other things I'm going to get in here. All right, I get some of these single-stranded binding proteins. Their whole job is to help stabilize the replication fork and keep it open. I'm going to get this sliding clamp. Now, the sliding clamp, its whole job is going to be to help us in here with the DNA polymerase 1 and the DNA polymerase 3 and all that good stuff. Okay? So those guys are going to come in and help us out. Other things that are going to be involved, we've got our primase, which is going to lay down our RNA primers, and here's another enzyme that helps us unwind. This is helicase. Obviously, it's an enzyme, it ends in ACE, but it also helps us to wind, unwind DNA helices. So that's our helicase, okay? So that's going to help us to kind of stabilize and keep this replication fork open. Leading strand very fast. So what's going to happen? As fast as this can open, we're going to have our RNA primase come in, and it's going to lay down a primer. Once that happens, now this little section is going, hey, here's where I'm at. We're going to bring in our next DNA, our DNA polymerase 3. All right? And DNA polymerase 3 is going to come down here. It's going to find this guy. It's going to read along until it runs into this. Now, I did misspeak earlier. I told you DNA polymerase 1 was the one that does this. DNA polymerase 1 is going to be the one that's going to replace the RNA primer. So, uh, excuse me, I did misspeak there earlier. But what DNA polymerase is going to do, it's going to find that RNA primer. It's going to start to read along. It's going to keep going until it runs into that next primer, in which case it's going to fall off. After that thing falls off, now DNA polymerase 1 is going to come in here. It's going to remove that RNA primer. It's going to fill in these last couple little segments, and then we're going to glue it all together with DNA ligase. So while I know it looks like there's a whole heck of a lot going on here, as long as you know the roles of the DNA and you understand this anti-parallel directionality thing, you should be good to go. Having said that, if after you watch this you still have questions, please throw comments into Google Classroom or email me. Um, if it seems like there's enough need, maybe we'll do another little live stream and I'll have everybody get together at some other point and we can kind of walk through this and address questions there and answer things that way. Um, that's the majority of what I wanted to focus on today was just the DNA replication and the replosome. Um, and that's pretty much what I wanted to do. So take your time, look at this figure, study it, make sure you understand the role of all these enzymes and what they're doing, and make sure you understand why the one can go really fast this way, but not this way. And again, it's due to that anti-parallel nature and the bi-directionality of DNA. Okay. So I hope that helps. Again, if you have questions, comments, concerns, you know how to get a hold of me. Have a good one.